Hello, welcome to the Hill. We're so glad you've joined us for today's uh, service. Um, it's going to be a powerful time of worship and ministry. And wherever you're at on this holiday weekend, Memorial Day, uh, we just pray that uh, you'll feel the presence and spirit of God. And uh, uh, even as you participate remotely, right, you can feel that presence. And Brian, we're excited about what's happening up on the Hill. Lots of great stuff. It's summertime. We are, yeah. uh, we'd love to see you come in person sometime. But yeah, it's going to be a great day. Absolutely. We said it last week, but this is the time of year where we can record these outside. Yeah. Beautiful weather. But it is Memorial Day weekend, and, and I know it, it can be a, a bit somber as we remember, especially loved ones or if you have those that have served. Uh, but it's also, as we'll learn today from our pastor, it's an opportunity to reflect on what God has done. Yeah. And what God has done gives us insight on what he can do in the future that's and right, in our man. lives and so that's very exciting we celebrate that today uh, but thank you so much for joining us let's get right to worship enter into worship amen
take a brief break. We'll be right back to worship. But just wanted to check on the smoker. I think we, you know we got <laughs> yeah. some meats on the on the smoker here. <laughs> Completely kidding, but you know Memorial Day weekend, right? So hopefully uh, you guys are yeah, grilling out a little bit. But no, we just wanted to talk real quick about this week um, specifically. We typically have a lot going on throughout the week. We've got one really special event happening this Wednesday night. We have our encounter prayer and worship service. So it's for all church, just an opportunity to come and pray. We'll have some uh, guided prayer, but we'll also have just some open prayer time. If you're praying for faith, praying for healing, praying for a move of God in your life, you absolutely want to be at this event. It is in person. Uh, it's on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. here at the Hill. Um, it's our encounter worship night. Very, very cool. Uh, but of course, Roger's going to tell us more in a broad sense what we do have going on here, typically midweek. Yeah, lots of great activities happening. Uh, again, it's summertime. Yep. Great time to come see us in person. Um, you know, we have a ministry for young people, yep. uh, the youth, every Sunday evening. Uh, we have our young adults to get together on Wednesday nights normally, not this week. Yep. Uh, well, they will be getting together, but just not on their own. We'll all, all be together. together. Yep. Um, the men are meeting on Tuesdays. Awesome. Women have meetings during the week. Yep. Um, Thursday night Bible, adult Bible study typically. And then, of course, everything we got going on Sundays. Yep. Uh, we just encourage you to go to the website, um, hillministries.church. Check out what we got going on every week. Um, again, there's something there for everyone in your family. We'd love to have you come in person. And uh, participate. So, yeah, check us out. Come Wednesday night. It's gonna be a powerful time of praise and worship, and uh, you know the powerful move of God could happen in your life. Yeah. And uh, healings, um, breakthroughs. It could be a great night. So, uh, we'd love to see you on Wednesday night. But check us out online. Participate in what we got going on. Amen. Love it. Love it. Back to worship. Let's do it. Back to worship. Have a great day.
Thank you, Lord, that we have you to turn to. That we don't have to fight our battles alone, but we can have the power of an almighty God that can do all things, can accomplish things that we can't accomplish, can solve problems that we can't solve. How many seen one of those? Amen. How many face things that they don't know how to attack it? God has a way. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. Speak to me and through me, Lord. I minister to these people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, happy uh, Memorial Weekend. And uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough Memorial Weekend. You say, Tracy, how is it tough? Well, if you pay attention to what's going on in the world, then you'll know what I'm saying. It's tough. Now, I've heard this name mentioned several different ways, several different times. And so, however I pronounce it will be fine with you guys, I hope. Uvalde, Texas. Okay. Life-changing event took place there. Something that will change all the family members. Every family member has been changed by what took place there. Nineteen children, two teachers, and even the Gudman and his family. Everyone's life will be changed. I say that from, from the standpoint of a, of a young boy who lost his sister. It's something that affects the whole family. And it's something that not only affects them today, but it'll affect them for the rest of their life. It'll be be a a stone of remembrance that sets out there that that they're always going to remember. I've heard a lot of comments that, that I'll just tell you right now totally disgust me. A lot of things have been said that totally disgust me. We, we, can't, we can't be making this a political issue. We can make it more difficult. We can make it more difficult for something like this to take place again, for sure. And even here at the church, we, we have we put in place different things that, that make it a little more difficult for some of you at times. We have doors that are locked at times. Those doors need to stay locked. Okay? Uh, uh, we may even do some more uh, uh, things in the future. I don't know. We're always looking. We're always... But, but ultimately, the safety of, of this congregation is of utmost importance in so many ways. When you're in here, we want you to be safe. So, so if you're annoyed by a door that's locked, get over it. Okay? <laughs> There's a reason. No, I could go on there for a long time, couldn't I? We can make it more difficult for something like this to take place again, but we never seem to address or attack the root of this problem in this nation and across the world. It's called sin. See, we misplace blame and misplaced blame will, will not ease the pain of this tragedy. It, it won't ease the pain knowing that, that, that uh, uh, we can blame this person or that person for this taking place. It won't fix it. It won't, it won't ease the pain. It, it, may, it may help us fix some things in the future, but ultimately misplaced blame will not ease the pain of this tragedy, but understanding and... and uh, Understanding the destructive power of sin in mankind will lead us to the foundation of the whole problem. The foundation of the whole problem is sin in this world. It it started in the garden. It started with, with Cain killing his brother Abel. And I've seen all kinds of memes about that. 
Yes, God did not take away all the rocks once uh, Cain killed Abel. I, I, we, can, we can go all different directions with this. But here's the problem. This is not the time. This is the time to mourn the loss of innocence and get to the foundation of why this happened and why this happened is there is evil in this world. And we have allowed much of the evil to continue in this world. I, I'm, I'm an advocate that we've, we've got to restore the, the sanctity of life. Life is important. It's precious. We, we, could, we could go back and ultimately the foundation of evil is sin. And sin is from our enemy. And we have to do everything we can in our lifetime to battle our enemy and battle sin. Why do, you, why do you think it talks about the armor of God? Because we're in a world that there's going to be attacks all the time. As Roger mentioned when he came up here to kind of get things rolling for us today, we, we're grateful for the men and women that gave their lives to give us the freedoms that we have today. Freedoms that we tend to give up so easily. I'm encouraging you. Evil is all around us. Evil is in the hearts and minds of men. And we must battle that. We must battle that. Dear Holy Father, right now, the town, the families, the loved ones, those acquainted with this great loss that has taken place this week. Lord, I pray a special prayer of comfort and peace that only your Holy Spirit can give and bring to that family, those families, and to that city, Lord. Do a special and powerful work there, Lord, I pray. Jesus, we're so grateful for the comforting spirit of the Holy Spirit. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that as a country we would come together in, in opposition to evil. And there is evil. Spirit of God, help us to be strong and stand against every form of evil that may even come from this, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 How many's had one of those weeks? I mean, it's been it's a great weekend. Everybody's happy for the weekend? Okay, I kind of brought you down. Now I'm trying to bring you back up a little bit because I want to encourage you today with what I have to say. I, I really like the guy who prayed this. Dear God, so far today I've been all right. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or even overindulgent. I'm, I'm really glad about that, Lord, but, but in a few minutes, I'm going to get out of bed, and from then on, I'm probably going to need a lot more help. <laughs> Have you ever felt that way in the morning? This is just great right here. If I could just stay right here in this place, everything would be fine, but I've got to get up, and I know some of these things are going to come against me and attack me. Well, let me tell you, we live in a world that is constantly trying to attack us, is trying to, trying to take us in ways that we don't want to go. And, and today, we celebrate, a, a Memorial Day was a celebration of great men and women that gave their lives to what? To give us the freedom to live a life like we saw bright. And, and uh, if you go back and look, American history... We observed uh, 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 on the last Monday of May to honor men and women that have died in the service in the U.S. military. Originally known as Decoration Day, it originated in, in uh, uh, the years following the Civil War and became an official holiday, and, and this is interesting for all you history buffs out there, it didn't become an official holiday until in my lifetime, now some of your lifetimes it was already there, but 1971, 1971 it became an official holiday. Many Americans observe it by uh, visiting cemeteries and memorials. We did that Friday night, we visited the graves and put flowers and roses on graves. And uh, 
uh, some other families hold gatherings and they go out of town and they go to parades and, and uh, unofficially, it's, it's, uh, at least for many, it's the beginning of summer. See, many people think Memorial Weekend is uh, the beginning of summer, the, the first big day at the lake, the Memorial Day sales that are going on. Um, uh, Vicki hasn't visited any of those yet. Uh, I'm gone Monday, so she may. We'll just have to see. But I hope you take a chance, I hope you take some time to go visit the cemeteries. It's a powerful thing to go to Leavenworth and, and, to, and to cruise through there. In years past, I'd take what, what I called the zebra. This year, we've been driving around in the, in the Jeep with the top off and, and just driving through and seeing all the flags and all the, all the memorials. It's a, it's a humbling and honoring event to do. Today, I want to minister to you about, though, stones of remembrance. When the, when the remembrance of these great men and women have, have been so solid for our nation, for years we've honored great men and women that have given their life for our freedom. And, and, and it's been done rightfully so. The honor's been given to them rightfully so. But I want us to consider what monuments, what events, what sayings, what memories bring strength and hope to you today and for your future. Because ultimately, when I visit the graves of these great men and women, I think of the great future that they've given me. This week, as I sat on the hill um, in, in the cemetery and at, at my dad's uh, graveside and my sisters and my grandparents, and I sat there and I thought, I thank God for these people who gave us the property on the hill that we could come and worship like we're doing even today. Last night, Vicki and I came up here, and, and uh, it had been a long, long day, and so we came up here, it was about 7 o'clock, and ate dinner in the Jeep, and, and uh, uh, Dairy Queen, it wasn't anything special, but it was just something to get us by, because it had been a long day. So, so we ate the Dairy Queen, and, and I sat up here, and I looked over at her, and I said, I am so thankful for the hill. Great people that sacrificed in their lifetime. And, and here we, we sit, and some of us don't want to sacrifice for what's going on up here. I've got to tell you, it's time to sacrifice. It's time to give a little bit. You say, Tracy, is this a money sermon? No, I'm just, it's giving of yourself. It's giving. It's give a little bit. But these great people have given us, and I, and I look back at the, the events that took place, the sayings that my dad said and that other people have said throughout history that, that give me strength and give me hope for today and give me a future. Memorial Weekend is a time of, of, of memorial. To me, it's, it's a day of remembrance. I don't know if it's because of my age or the position that I am in life, but, but we live in a rapidly changing world, and it keeps, it keeps trying to knock us off the footing of of, of what we've grown up to believe in. What, what truth we've been given in God's word, this world, this culture wants to take the footing right out from underneath us. But we need to stay on the path. We need to stand strong and, and face adversity. I believe it's a powerful uh, thing to remember history and to call it forth whenever we can. We need, we need to remember the events of our, our past not only our past as, as individuals, but as a great nation. The events and the words and the, and the, and the lives that have, have protected us and have brought us to this place, especially in the insane world that we live in today. You say, Tracy, is this gloom and doom? No, it's not gloom and doom. Because here's the thing. All of us remember the good old days. All of us remember the good old days. Matter of fact, I remember the good old days. I remember when my mom used to tuck me into bed and kiss me goodnight. My grandma used to babysit me. My grandma Thomas. My grandpa, my grandpa Brooks used to take me on the meat route, and we used to go down to Parsons and pick up meat and then deliver it to all the stores up here in the area. My, my, my uh, uh, grandma Brooks used to take me to McDonald's and buy me silly straws. My grandpa Thomas, he, he taught me how to work hard, shoveling manure, in his garden, and my dad, his work to constantly try to keep me straight, and he did a pretty good job. These were my good old days. These were, these were days where I didn't seem to have a care in the world. 
the good old days. Let's define them because everybody has different good old days. It's amazing that in the good old days, it was a day full of hope. It was a day full of hope and love. It's amazing that all of us, no matter how young we are or how old we are, we have what we have in our mind is good old days. Your good old days are going to be different than my good old days. But what was constant in all of our good old days was hope and love. Those that loved us were around us, and love was all around us. The good old days were, were when uh, we're not based on the economy, we're not based on the job that you had, we're not based on the health that you had. Good old days were based on love and hope that you had in your life. The more love and the hope, more hope you had, the better the days were. Hope is not brought to us by politics. Hope is not brought to us by politicians. Hope comes from our consistent, never-changing, always-present, never-failing God. I want to take you to some good old days in the Old Testament. Some events that took place also in the New Testament. The writers gave us, gave us stones that we need to return to and we need to remember. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Joshua a lot today. Joshua, then Matthew, 1 Corinthians, and we'll just see how far we get. Let's start in Joshua chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. It says, The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will, bring, I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Now Moses was a great guy, wasn't he? He was, he was, he was one of those guys that just people looked up to. He did great and powerful things. But Joshua is next in line, and, and God's going to exalt him. God is going to exalt him and encourage him, just as he was with Moses before you. And as for you, command the priest to bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you come to the brink of the waters of Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Here's the encouragement. The Lord encourages Joshua. He does, it, he does it in Exodus chapter 24, verse 13, and he also does it in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 78, 7 and 8. It says this, Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to your fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will, he will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. That's an encouragement. That's an encouragement to Joshua. It's an encouragement to all those that are following in the path that God is setting for us. Joshua encourages the people in verses 3 through 9 of Joshua 3. And Joshua said to the people of Israel, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Here is how you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will with, without fail drive out from before you the Canaanite, the Hittites, the, the uh, Havites, the, I like to call it the Parasites, Parasites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is passing over before you into the land of Jordan. Now therefore, take 12 men from the tribe of Israel, from each tribe a man. And when the soles of the feet of the priest bearing the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all hosts shall rest in the water of the Jordan the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing, and the waters coming down from above shall stand up, stand in one heap. See, Joshua has heard from the Lord, and he's telling the people, this is about to happen. We're about to go over. We've had 40 terrible years. Now, they weren't that terrible. Yeah, they had a lot of stuff. A lot of people had to die and stuff. But ultimately, God sustained them all the way through their journey in the wilderness. Why did this have to happen? Why did it take 40 years to travel just the short distance they could have done in a few days? 
It took that long because of disobedience. How many wants to take 30 years or 40 years because of your disobedience to achieve what God has for you? Get yourself in line now then with the will and the plan of God. He encourages the people by telling them God is going to do it. He's going to do something powerful. He tells them to look for it. It's important that I tell you what you need to look for. You need to look for the things that God are, is doing. God is doing a powerful, powerful work. He can continue to do a powerful work if you will, what? Walk in his path. So what does he do? Verses 14 through 17. So when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as soon as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the ark were dipped in the brinks of the water. Now the Jordan, it says, a little, little side note here, now the Jordan overflows all its banks through the time of harvest. That water comes down from above and stood and rose up in a heap very far away at Adon, in the city that is beside Zephyrin. And those flowing down towards the Sea of Arabath, the Salt Sea, were completely cut off as the people passed over opposite Jericho. Now the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nations finished passing over the Jordan. The people set out from their tents. The feet of the priest bearing the ark are dipped into the Jordan and the water just heaps up upstream. The water which came down from above, that is the Sea of Galilee, stood and rose up in one heap. I believe an actual heap of water stood up. Just as in Exodus when Moses brought them out of Egypt in Exodus chapter 15, verse 8. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up the flood stood up in a heap and deeps congelled in the heart of the sea. See, this took place, uh, they're walking across the Jordan in the time of harvest. And, and in reality, if you go back to the, to the Greek and read that, it says there, the, the Jordan overflows all its banks. That means that ultimately it was from bank to bank full. It was full of water until what? until the priests dipped their feet into it and it heaped up. Now we can go through all kinds of things and, and, and there are people that try to explain this miracle away, but ultimately the children of Israel seen it, they wrote about it, and we have to take their eyewitness account for fact. Too many times we would rather take someone else's theory instead of taking someone eyewitness account. That's the problem that we're having, having down in uh, Uvalde. Today, they, we got a lot of people saying a lot of different things, but ultimately, I want somebody that saw what took place. And these people tell us that, that the water heaped up and they walked across on dry ground. See, there's something important about entering the water. Joshua encouraged them to follow the priest. I'm not walking into the Jordan. Man, that's awful fast-flowing water there. But he said, no, you follow the priest. You follow the, the men that are carrying the ark of God. You walk into the water, it heaps up, and what do they do? They walk across on dry ground. See, you have to enter the water for things to start happening. So many times we don't want to enter the water. I feel pretty comfortable back here in my tent. Although I don't find it very comfortable in a tent. But I, I'll just tell you, they... They were comfortable. They lived, they, many of them lived their entire life out of a tent. And now they're going to go take cities. And he says, step out into the water. The encouragement is God's going to go before us and he's going to do something special. So if God's going to do something special, why are you standing back? Why don't you get in line and put your foot in the water? There's another sermon I don't have time for. See, there's a remembrance that takes place because if you were one of those that walked across 
on dry ground, you would remember that. That'd be, that'd be something that stuck in your head. Stepping out by faith and walking across. Today, my family understands the power of God because God healed my body and let me walk out of a hospital room years ago. God, God healed my cancer and removed it from my body and we believe in miracles today. See, we, we get to a point where we're like, Woe is me, I guess I'll just settle right here. No, God's got more for us. He's got more for us. You say, will it be tough? Yeah, it's tough at times. But you follow in him and he will do what that song said before I came up here. He will fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles, in him. What I want you to call your attention to now is in Joshua chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. It's remember in the midst. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan. In the place where the feet of the priests bear the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And, and, and they are there to this day. For the priests bearing the Ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until evening was finished that all, Lord, that all the Lord commanded Joshua to tell the people according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua. So in the middle of the Jordan, Joshua takes stones and sets them up as a memorial in the middle of the Jordan. And then, remember Gilgal in verses in chapter 4, verses 1 through 8 and 4, 11 through 24, what do we see there? He takes 12 stones out of the midst of the Jordan and takes them and makes another memorial. Now there's something powerful here because generations of Israelite people came back to that memorial at Gilgal and said, listen to this, and, and this is abbreviation because I have a lot more notes that I'm not going to be able to get into today, but ultimately they brought their children back and they showed the memorial here standing in Gilgal, the 12 stones that were carried out by one man from every tribe, a memorial to what God has done, but then they would point to the center of the Jordan River and say, there's a mo another memorial that is there that represents our past and where we came from and the sin and the trouble. That's my old life, but this is my new life. We lose track. We, we forgot they brought me back to the memorial, and that's the one I see. But there's one that we don't see. There's one that we have to have faith and believe that it's there. That faith and belief that it's there is the faith and belief that you've been changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Too many times we, we say a prayer, we, 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 uh, we, we think we're okay because we've said the prayer, but there's no change in our life. The water hasn't covered it. It hasn't been buried with Christ. The memorial on the, on the hillside of Gilgal is nothing unless you recognize that memorial is only there because we gave up all that was behind us. This memorial's here because of that memorial in the middle. When I looked at my dad's, where he, his body is laying this weekend, I looked at that graveside, 2019, told the girls some things while, while we were there on Friday night, and as I looked there, I said, this is a memorial for my dad. But if it wasn't for him, we would not have what we have today. We forget a lot of times what's buried in our past. I want to tell you, don't forget what's buried in your past. Now you say, Tracy, we're not supposed to bring up the past. We're supposed to move forward. I'll tell you what, past will keep you straight. If you, if you repented of your sins and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, or you said a little prayer and you look back and you've not changed, you're not saved. Oh, no, I just said that in public, out loud. My goodness, 
You get a bunch of people that think that, that because they believe in God, but they haven't come to a point that they say, this is the old man and this is the new man. Walking in newness of life. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who, who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We are buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. God wants us to walk in newness of life. He wants us to be transformed. He, he wants us to, today, if, if, you, if you do not know Christ, but, or if you're making a new commitment to him, he wants you to set up a new memorial today. And he wants you to bury the old memorial in the, in the Jordan that you're passing over today to get to hit where he wants you to be. When we study Joshua chapter 5, we see a spiritual significance of, of the, the Christian today. The establishment of the monument and the circumcision of the new generation all took place there at Gilgal. Meanwhile, for generations, the Jewish people would ask, their Jewish children would ask about the 12 stones at Gilgal, and the parents would always point them back and say, we crossed that river, and in the middle of that river are 12 stones that we buried, which was our old selves, and this is our new man. You can't see it, but it's there. It reminds us of the old life, but the old life has been buried, and we must live in new life in obedience to the Lord. The children would have to accept the fact by faith. And if they did, they could make a great difference in the way that they would relate to God and to his will in their lives. God brings us out that he might bring us in. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 23. And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in and give us the land that, that he swore to give to our fathers. He brings us out that we might overcome the claim, that we, that we might overcome and claim the inheritance in Jesus Christ because God's people identify with Christ in his death burial, and resurrection. Galatians 2, verses 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Today I ask, remember your Gilgal. Remember your Gilgal. Remember what happened to you. First question is, where were you when your Gilgal experience took place? Where were you when you truly repented of your sins and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? That needs to be a memorial that you return to regularly. When was it? For some of you, it was pretty recent. For others, it's been a long time and maybe you need to go back and remember it again. Some, some, of it, some of you, it's been so long that you can't even recall. I'll tell you, it's important to go back and remember again. Throughout my life, and, and as many of you know, raised in a Christian home, uh, raised by a pastor and his wife, and, and, uh, but there were many moments. Five years old, I remember a great moment in my life, but, but more recent, 2005, was, was a, an experience that I'll never forget. I can tell you when it happened, what time of day it was, where I was, everything that happened on that day in 2005. And then many of you know the testimony of 2007 and 2008. And ultimately, I will never forget there is a memorial in my heart and in my mind and, and even in my writings that, that constantly point back to that because that's where the hand of God truly touched me and changed me. 
And we don't return to those moments and say, I'm not that guy anymore, but look what I am. Amen. We don't go, we got to go back and we say, this is who I used to be, but now God, look how far, oh, look how much difference there is in my life because of the memorial that took place, because of the change that took place, because of the faith that took place. Where were you? And the biggest question that you all have to recognize, what were you when you came to Christ? The biggest problem we have in our culture today is no one's a sinner. And everyone's a sinner that needs a Savior. When we came to Jesus Christ, we were a sinner needing a Savior. And from that moment on, a memorial needs to be made. That was me, the old man. Now the new man exists. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19 says this. Because I need to transition. That was the Old Testament. A lot of people say, well, that was old. That was Old Testament. That was an event that was with the nation of Israel. That doesn't have a lot of purpose and meaning to me today. Well, let me tell you, God is still concerned about memorials and stones of remembrance. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and, and others Jeremiah uh, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter, the big, the big fisherman that sometimes didn't know how to hold his tongue. The big fisherman that, that did a lot of stupid stuff like you do a lot of stupid stuff. The big fisherman, he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, are, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I, I just want to stop there. Up on this rock. Now some people think it's on Peter. No, it's not on Peter. If you read that in the, in the Greek, it is on the belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Is the Christ, is the Messiah. That belief is the stone that, of remembrance that he calls us back to on a regular basis. You are not saved unless you what? Unless you let that big stone fall on you. That stone has to break you. That stone has to be a, 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 a memorial to you. Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and it's only through Him am I saved. Verse 19 says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bind, bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. See, there's a rock. Who is the rock? The rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. Going back is where great things begin. I went back Friday night, and I looked at those gravesides and I said, these are where great things began. We visited uh, Vicky's grandparents and, and mother and, and father and, and ultimately that, that's a great place where she began. Amen. I thank God for them raising such a wonderful woman. Amen. 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 Should have been everybody just, everybody just stand and applaud. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's move on. Because we can forget. We can all say, yeah, Jesus, I serve Jesus. At, at, he's, he's my Lord and Savior. But Paul even writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 5, Now I would remind you, brethren, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast, to the word I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. I love verse 3. It says, For I deliver to you as of first importance what I received, that Christ died on your, 
died for your sins in accordance with the scripture, that he was buried and that he raised, he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scripture, and that he appeared to Cephas and to the 12, and then it goes on to 500 and many more. Ultimately, Peter acknowledges what is of first importance for us to remember all the time who Jesus Christ is. First importance, remember, return to it often. I got to tell you, what, what's the first thing you ever learned? Oh, man, here we go. That's a tough one. What's the first thing you ever learned? The first thing you ever learned is who loves you. The very first thing you ever learn is who will care for you and who loves you. You didn't learn to stay away from fire. You didn't learn to keep your hands off the stove first. You didn't learn the word no first, although sometimes I think that. What you learn first is that there's somebody that truly loves you. And that's Jesus Christ. In our, as we look back at what is of first importance, that's who first loved us. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight of sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and, in, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. You're not alone. Sometimes we think we're fighting this battle all by ourselves. Sometimes we think we're on this path all by ourselves. And, and, and Paul is telling us here, we believe it's Paul that wrote Hebrews, a lot of us, but ultimately he's telling us what? He's telling us exactly that you are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. So many other men and women have fulfilled the will of God, even though all the circumstances around them would say, this can't happen. It can happen. You're not alone. Others have blazed the trail. I love that word, blazing the trail. Don't really know what it means necessarily, but I can tell you, I, 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 it's good to know that I've, I'm not walking in a path that somebody else hasn't walked before. I, I, I look at some of the odd things that's happened in my life, and I ask you to look at some of the odd things that's happened in your life. And sometimes we think and we feel, boy, that was, that was tough. I, I don't know if anybody ever experienced anything like that before. I got to tell you, they probably have. Yeah. And sub to a greater degree than you have. I'll, I'll never forget setting... Uh, every 21 days, I spent three days in a room with all kinds of cancer patients while we got infused with, with stuff to kill us. And, and here's what I, I would look around and I'd say, you know, they're, they're struggling more than I am. Look at that person. They kept all their hair. I didn't, you know. Uh, all kinds of stuff we'd, I'd look around and think. And then I'd realize that Nothing that I've experienced, somebody probably hasn't already experienced. And God will get you through it. God will bring you through it. It's now your turn to walk the trail. As I said goodbye up on the hill of the cemetery to the gravesides, as I walked away, I thought, it's my turn. Not to be there necessarily, but to, it's, my turn to, it's my turn to keep things going. It's my turn to keep the lights on, keep, keep preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's your turn to keep doing the ministries that you've been called to do. It's your turn. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 
knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. Closing today. Dr. James Dobson in in, uh, Tyndale House Publishing, Timeless Wisdom for Families, Coming Home, Timeless Wisdom for Families. He wrote about the Taj Mahal. And I want to share that with you in closing today. The Taj Mahal is one of the most beautiful and costly tombs ever built. But there's something fascinating about its beginning. In 1629, when the favorite wife of the Indian ruler Shah Jehan died, he ordered that a magnificent tomb be built in memorial to her. The Shah placed his wife's casket in the middle of a parcel of land, and construction of the temple literally began around it. But, but several years into the venture, the Shah grief for his wife gave way to the passion for the project. One day while he was surveying the site, he, he reportedly stumbled over a wooden box and he had some of the workers throw it out. It was months before he realized that his wife's casket had been destroyed. The original purpose for the memorial became lost in the details of construction. Don't lose sight of your salvation. They built this great, great hall to memorialize his great wife, his favorite wife. But in the building of it, he lost sight of his wife, and it was all about the building. Don't lose sight of your salvation. The day, the place, and who you were before. Claim your spiritual inheritance in Christ. Believe the world of, word of faith. And get your feet wet. Step out in a walk of faith. And God will open the way for you. Surrender yourself to the Lord and die to the old man. Let's stand. A little bit different service today, being a holiday weekend. But it's a, it's a weekend of memorials. It's a, it's a weekend of remembrance. If today is such a day that you recognize who you are or where you are and it's not where God wants you to be, then ultimately this needs to be a day that is a day of remembrance for a transformation that's going to take place in your life. But it takes you recognizing it. See, I was a, I was a self-righteous sinner for a lot of my Christian life. I played the part, I acted the part, I did the things that were acceptable to the church, but ultimately I hadn't really recognized the old man and the, and the sin that had crept into my life. Today, I don't know where you're at. Maybe you're a, maybe you've recognized today that you are a true sinner and this is going to be the first time that you repent of your sins and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But for many that are here and many are watching online, you're, you're, you're somebody that maybe has hardened to the Spirit of God that's been convicting you. And it's time for you to surrender to that Spirit and say, Lord, change me into what you want me to be. Lord, put me on the rock that you want me to be on. Build 
a memorial inside of me that I will never forget that I will not return to this way of living that I'm repenting of today and be transformed. Somebody here needs that. If that's you, don't hesitate to surrender to the Lord and to His Spirit today. There's going to be prayer teams under each exit door on these sides, and we'll be glad to pray with you. The altars will be open, and we're going to transition once again into worship. But if you need prayer for any reason, come to one of us, one of the prayer teams, or even to somebody in the back, they'd be glad to pray with you. But today, make this day a memorial. Let the Spirit of God change you. Let this be a day where you point back and say, my old man is buried in the Jordan. My new man is marching forward in Gilgal, and we're going to take Jericho. Let that be your prayer today. Father in heaven, minister, spirit of God, move in this place. Lord, you know, you know the convicting power that's needed. You also know the comfort and peace that is needed in people's lives. Do a mighty work, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
You are faithful forever. 
again, another great time of uh, worship and the ministry of God's Word today, Brian. What yes. a powerful message from Pastor Tracy. Uh, where is that stone of remembrance in your life? Um, this Memorial Day weekend, we certainly take time to honor um, those who have given their lives in service for our country. Uh, we certainly take time to remember loved ones lost. Uh, but most importantly, we take time to remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right. And uh, we need to place that stone of remembrance where you're going to move forward from this day and uh, let God change your life, right? Bury that old past. We don't ever want to forget, as Pastor Tracy said, where we've come from. Yeah. But we want to have that stone of remembrance so we can move forward um, in a powerful way with God's providence over our life, living in His under his mercy but living uh, with his will yeah. and uh, this is a great weekend a great opportunity to set that stone so uh, we're so glad you joined us today uh, brian tell us about everything else we need to know about giving and how people can be a part of our church yeah that's right it's one thing that we believe uh, very highly in it's just uh, the involvement uh, that we try to make available for our extended family and that includes you online so uh, giving is just a very practical way that you can help us here at the hill it takes money to do what we do and uh, so if, uh, you want to bless us in that way anything you're able to do is very much appreciated um, the hill ministries dot church slash give uh, we try to make that as easy as possible for you uh, but we also I say it just about every time I do these we want to hear from you if you are watching this video and you are getting something uh, from the Spirit of God, from these services, uh, send an email, offices at thehillministries.church. Tell us what God is doing in your life. Let us know how we can partner with you, how we can pray. Uh, and just let us know that you're watching. We love to hear that Amen. stuff. Uh, but we love you guys. Uh, I hope by now uh, you've had plenty of time with family. It's the Memorial Day uh, weekend, as we've said. So. We're going to get to our families now, That's right. but we love you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Have a great week. That's right. Let's get back to those burgers. Back to those burgers. <laughs> They're burning. <laughs>